Alabama found. Well, it's not a road trip without a little bit of snow. Luckily, we got plenty of weight for traction. You silly girl. What? Definitely gonna miss Alaska, but fortunately, it's just a temporary goodbye. Got a happy baby, just got some food. Messy RV because we haven't put everything away yet because we're rushing out of here. A semi happy dog. Gracie, you do look kind of sad. Some food warming. Oh, baby spit up. Oh, nice. And some good views. Welcome to the Alcan in April. 17 degrees and roads covered in snow. When we're going slow. Well, morning two of the trip, woke up 10 degrees, a little more so. Well, you know what they say, if you're gonna break down, make sure it's in the middle of the Yukon when it's 10 degrees outside with a baby in the back. We have no start. I don't even hear the relay clicking. So to kind of catch y'all up and uh, surmise everything that's happened, basically yesterday we left Alaska, drove from Anchorage to Beaver Creek, just inside the uh, Canadian border, and went to bed. We got to bed pretty late, uh, like right after midnight, kind of a uh, poor road, poor uh, driving conditions, so pretty excited to get to sleep. Woke up this morning expecting to hit the road and keep trucking, and the RV did not start, so... Tried jumping it, tried all the uh, common th things that we thought maybe would fix it. No luck, but unfortunately we were still stuck here. So spend another night here. Tomorrow we'll get towed. And to top it all off, it's gonna be negative nine, to, or not negative nine. It's gonna be nine tonight. So a little concerned about our propane levels, but hopefully we'll make it. So this is what's called the scream or the immobilizer. It communicates with the key so that basically once the key's in, you're not stealing it. So some people say that these will fail when they get cold, which it was 10 degrees last night. So I'm gonna try and warm it up with some hand warmers. Some people are saying that they use a blow dryer to warm it up. I obviously don't have access to one of those. So I'm just gonna slap some hand or toe warmers technically on it and then wrap it in some foil. Oh, let's pray this works, because if not, we're looking at like a $3,000 tow bill to the next town. So we're back? at the point of deciding what to do, because the tow truck company's coming tomorrow to get this thing. And they do not have room for the kiddo. So Savannah and the kiddo and maybe the dog, we're not entirely sure what to do with the dog yet. Um, it's gonna stay here in Beaver Creek, and then I'm gonna go to White Horse with a tow truck driver. I'm gonna have six hours of awesome bonding with a tow truck driver. And then we gotta figure out how long this RV is gonna take to get fixed, and then figure out if what the plan is from there. So it's kind of all a big mess, but it sure would be a lot easier if this thing just started and we could drive out of here. Huh, we're stuck in the Yukon. Yeah. He's stuck in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And nobody wants to drive a baby. <laughs> well, there goes the trailer. So I just hooked up this trailer to a random passerby. He's got Alaska plates. He's from Wasilla. It should be nice. He's going to take the uh, trailer to the motor inn where Savannah's staying tonight. And, uh, then the lady who works the motor end is going to come pick up Savannah and Hazel. So hopefully it'll all work out. Kind of crazy. I just gave them like probably $10,000 worth of stuff in that trailer. And uh, just hoping that he takes it to the right place. But he seemed trustworthy. Just biked into town. There's the trailer. All right, we're supposed to get left. So that's nice. We can still trust some people out in this world. So we're here in the uh, duplex that... Yukon Rita, I guess she's kind of famous for taking care of people in this area that break down, but she put it span up in a duplex. So we're here uh, hanging out. I was just uh, out at the RV 
and I had, uh, or just kind of waiting for the tow truck driver to get in because I'm going to ride with him to Whitehorse and couldn't get a hold of him, couldn't get a hold of him. Finally got, just decided to come here and hang out with Savannah rather than just being apart. And, uh, next little, uh, piece of the story is I called him and he's like, oh, we're having truck problems and we might not make it. I'll call you back. So that's the latest we've heard at this point. So might not even get the, uh, RV to Whitehorse today to start working on it. So that's going to be a mess, but figure out what happens. So the towing company called back. It broke down. So we're staying a third night in Beaver Creek tonight. This time in uh, Yukon, Rita's little duplex. So I just went back to the RV to get the dog and uh, please get her for the night. And then we're gonna figure out the next plan. Yeah, I uh, just got in touch with the other guy scheduling the uh, towing company. And he had said that uh, basically the, the guys who were coming were the only people who were the heavy towing company out of uh, Whitehorse. So if they can't do it, then it's gonna have to be potentially someone out of Fairbanks, which would be a giant mess. So we're just, uh, yeah, we're just along for the ride right now. Beaver Creek, most westerly community in Canada. It's the longest I've spent in Canada. Let's see. You are disgusting. What the? Well, I couldn't really use the uh, last video because it was filled with a bunch of uh, expletives of excitement. But I got the RV running. We're driving. Holy cow, I'm going to go pick up Savannah now. I got a multimeter and was testing stuff. Um, I really didn't do anything super special, to be honest. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what changed or if I just got lucky, it's a coincidence, but we're not gonna turn this thing off until we get through Canada, Canadian border. That's the plan. So we're just gonna keep trucking. We're just gonna sleep with this thing running. We'll burn a little more fuel, but we'll live. So anyways, glad to have it running. Not gonna spend night four in Beaver Creek. Didn't do a great job of getting content while I was diagnosing and working on the RV. Um, but honestly, at the time, I was just trying to sort it out and manage all the logistics for everything. Know for sure it wasn't the battery or the starter. Uh, best I can tell is the ECM was cutting the ignition for some reason, which really the only thing that makes sense would be the immobilizer. Uh, a lot of people were saying that uh, the Mercedes diesel immobilizers are pretty finicky, especially when it's cold, which the day it finally did start was the first day it had been above freezing. I still think the safe bet is just to leave it running. Diesels are pretty efficient at idle. Uh, that way, at least get closer to the border where we know that uh, there's more resources and parts available. And then uh, we can try and diagnose it more from there. It's not how many signs there are. Someone left a starter at the sign village. Wonder what kind of troubles they ran into. Bison laying down over there. On our drive through the Alcan, the craters we have found, six herds of bison, five majestic elk, four mule deer, three roaming moose, two turkeys, and a lynx on the side of the road. <laughs> Doing it right. Be a little bit of a spicy exit by RV standards, but I think we got it. Got a coffee mug in remembrance of our stay. Savannah was just looking up 
in uh, Banff and Jasper whether dogs are allowed because in U.S. National Parks or not. We're trying to figure out what to do with Gracie so she doesn't get too hot during the day while we're out hiking and doing whatever. And she found some service that uh, will apparently take care of your pet while you're out doing whatever you want. And uh, the kind of interesting thing is dog, the rate to take care of your pet is the same as it uh, costs to take care of your child. So apparently, yeah, I don't, I don't know how they came up with that value. I feel like I would much rather take care of a dog than a child, but I don't know. I guess if you're rich, it doesn't matter. I think this is my favorite mountain of the whole place. So we both kind of a rookie RV move and uh, we don't have water yet because it's been freezing overnight since the last time we technically could have gotten water if we would have found a place. but. It's been pretty low temps, so we've been waiting to put water in it so we don't bust any pipes. But someone's still been peeing in the back bathroom. You too. Yeah, me too, occasionally. And uh, and now it's getting warmer, so the urine is just absolutely reeking, and it's like somehow just like fumigating through this whole RV, and it stinks pretty bad. That's pretty awful. I'm not gonna lie. It's like an outhouse in the middle of the woods. <laughs> yeah, but we live in it. So, so Not in the middle of the woods, at a public trail that's very common. So we're going to go across the border where I know there's water at one of the RV parks. We'll fill up water, we'll flush it, dump it. It'll be all happy dandy. We hope. She's being dramatic. It's, it's bad, but it's not that bad. It's horrific. Well, we were running low on diesel. Stopped in this small Montana town to get some diesel. I don't think we're getting any though. Well, I'm glad that uh, we carried a little bit of diesel still in the trailer just for a situation like this because uh, there's only one pump and it was laying on the ground. So no diesel from there. Well, the rest of the trip ended up being pretty uneventful. It's translated to uh, pretty boring watching. So I think this is where we'll end it.